Fade Goodwin here, and if you still the world, like, subscribe, share, comment, all that good stuff, help promote and rank up my channel, so we're going to be reviewing the Snyder Cut, and I'm going to avoid spoilers. In some cases, there will be a few things spoiled, but I'll tack that on to the end of the negative section, and I will put spoiler warning on the screen. So, like, subscribe, share, all that good stuff, help promote and rank up my channel. Uh, just a quick recap of context when it comes to this particular film, Zack Snyder. Snyder's Justice League, uh, DC Entertainment, DCU, DC Extended Universe, DC Comics Films, however you want to label it, Man of Steel, Batman v Superman, and Justice League, they were all meant to be part of Snyder, Zack Snyder's unified vision, uh, tragedy struck, he left, this film does have a dedication to his daughter Autumn, uh, but he left the Justice League film at about 70% complete, I think, uh, WB brought in Josh Whedon to do what they thought was a course correction, I guess, to more of totally align yourself with Marvel, uh, for people dying to see these DC Comics heroes come together on screen for the first time on big screen in live action. Uh, that meant getting a film that was average at best and at worst getting a two-faced, disoriented film suffering from a case of double vision, stripped of the meaty substance, the fleshed out characters, down to the bone for runtime under, under time constraints, frustrating time constraints. These actors who considered Zack Snyder a friend had to work under those conditions, knowing why he left, having to work with knowing his film was being butchered his vision was being butchered, uh, butchered a very stressful, frustrating, undesirable thing to experience, work environment, and after you had all believed the claims of Ray Fisher, it was a toxic environment. Aside from all the claims and stuff like that, this is an HBO Max exclusive. Um, Zack Snyder does have a special message tacked on to the front of the film that thanking everybody for their support. So, you're going to get an honest review right here. Positives more Ben Affleck and Henry Cavill as Batman and Superman. How can you not want that? That is the problem. This is probably the last time we're gonna get them like this in these roles, and, and that's a damn shame. And so, eat this up while wow, you got it. I know I did it. Uh, Gal Gadot back as Wonder Woman, kicking ass that better than in Wonder Woman 1984. Uh, there's a lot of character depth, substance. Ray Fisher Cyborg has a significant, fully fleshed out role to play this time around. And I don't even like the actor, but I, I do like the character Cyborg. Um, the actor playing Silas Stone his father, awesome actor, that dude's been around for a while, and he always delivers, and he delivers here again. The action sequences with Wonder Woman and the Amazons are top notch. The cinematography is awesome. It is a film uh, about the rapidly approaching doom and gloom, but Batman himself feels less like doom and gloom than previously depicted in Batman v Superman, which is something I actually appreciated. This film does have proper setup for the villain and plot. It's fully fleshed out, has some quality Batman action, and we get some scenes with really cool, surprising characters. Though brief, very awesome, and Alfred has a significant role in here. He he does feel like part of the team, though. The film has a dreamlike quality to it, though, because this this is something. Uh, it feels like this was pulled out of an alternate dimension. We're not supposed to get this. What is this? Um, and, and just it feels like it's also pulled out of an alternate reality because. Uh, it's playing by different rules and stuff that that, that studios don't abide by about a, such a long ass runtime, uh, and it's a fantastic follow up to Man of Steel and Batman v Superman. I didn't really like those films. I'm not gonna pretend I did. Now, now Batman v Superman Ultimate Edition is more enjoyable than the theoretical one, uh, the theatrical one. With all that said, though, I can see a. Uh, you know, I, I just, I can't see a reality in which Warner Brothers would have released this in theaters due to the runtime. And I know some things, uh, like, 
they're only in here they were intended to be included in the sequel it's the final hurrah or whatever so they're crammed in here and some things were meant uh, uh I don't know how much of this was meant to be in this film and how much of it was meant to be in sequels. There's a lot of stuff here. Some of it works, some of it doesn't. Uh, but this is... I would consider this better than Man of Steel and Batman v Superman. I haven't been particularly fond of Snyder's vision of it, but this one it does feel lighter and it doesn't make the characters seem so grim. However, um... I still want some more Henry Cavill Superman and a bit more of that classic Superman. Uh, anyways, like I said though, this film does have some problems and hardcore Snyder fans aren't going to appreciate me talking about them. So let's move into the negatives where we start to piss some people off. So negatives on this one, I didn't get as much Henry Cavill as I wanted. He comes in very late. I didn't get enough hand-to-hand -hand combat from Batman, that kind of action. I, I, I really would have enjoyed seeing this Ben Affleck Batman do more like hand-to-hand -hand stuff. The film takes hard cuts into each chapter intentionally because it was going to be delivered as a miniseries. I don't like the cuts. I understand the cuts. It is four hours long, so these bookmarks might be appealing to some. There's... A lot of scenes I feel could have and should have been cut because they don't really contribute to the story that well and they kind of negatively impact the flow and extend the runtime to an unnecessary degree. The intro and setup for Barry Allen didn't feel needed and the execution felt off-putting. His portrayal still feels off-putting. The way Ezra Miller runs. It, it looks all footing. It looks silly. It looks dumb. And everything about Ezra Miller as Barry Allen, I just don't like. I cannot get on board with it. His jokes fall flat for me. I don't like any of the humor. They leave me pretty damn stone faced. Uh, Ray Fisher's cyborg wasn't given emotional range. He's still expressionless, robotic. Uh, but there is substance to his story this time around. But it, it does nothing to show if this actor has any range at all. It does nothing. Uh, so after the main story is over and done with, uh, it still drags uh, on with unnecessary scenes that are tacked on because it's Snyder's last outing. And, and I've got some spoilers here. So fair warning if you don't want to hear get out oh, here's the big spoilers yeah and this has been exposed this has been leaked it's been said by Zack snyder himself he's bragged about joker having joker getting a chance for this joker and this batman to interact with each other so when we finally do get that scene joker and batman uh i still just can't stand jared leto as joker the scene the two they talk about the deaths of Robin and Harley Quinn. It has Deathstroke in it, which is cool. I like that actor as Deathstroke. Uh, but it's just a bad scene. Like, it goes in and out of focus. I really do not like Jared Leto as Joker, even though they removed all, all the tattoos and stuff from him in this depiction, which makes them more accurate to you know the source material joker the joker we're familiar with classic joker uh this though he's still bad as joker i didn't like the one scene i got with him in it i really didn't like it and it meant to show the apocalypse we would have gotten but we had more appealing glimpses earlier in the film at the apocalypse that we would have gotten that was going to be set up for the next couple of films next up uh, martian manhunter it's actually in this film and I did not like the character design I actually think he looked cooler on the 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 CW Supergirl show which I do not like and cannot stand at all um uh, but I do think their Martian Manhunter looked cool and the character had a couple scenes in this movie and as cool as it is to have him here uh it should have been delivered in a better way or not at all because it doesn't really add any value to the story. I, you, you could have had him like pop in and, and 
save the day or something, do something. That just the scenes he's in in here, they don't really make much sense to me. Yeah, and, and, and that's pretty much all I've got to say for spoilers. All right, so overall, I don't like Jared Leto, Ezra Miller, Jesse Eisenberg, Amber Heard, or Ray Fisher as these characters, but I still enjoyed this film, so that should say a lot right there. That should say a lot there. There was a lot of substance brought to Cyborg's role. He's pivotal and essential to the story here, and it, they really fleshed out a lot of this stuff, but there were also some things that didn't really need to be fleshed out as much as they were, some things that didn't need to be in here at all, there were a couple of scenes that kind of just annoyed me and irritated me, like that one there, or that, that one there, some of the music just didn't really fit for me, and some of those scenes uh, that drugged out it's like well why do we have to have that day you could have cut that and it would have flowed better uh there's quite a few things in here that you could have cut that would have made it flow better there's like all that stuff tacked on at the end that's really unnecessary it's his final hurrah i get it though he wants to show everything and get as much milk it as much as possible squeeze that lemon for all of its fucking worth um and you can't blame him now um but Overall, I still think Ezra Miller is the biggest problem with this and that most of his scenes could have been cut other than, uh, you know, Batman Batman just finding out, oh, oh, there's this kid at the convenience store. I caught him on camera and now I can just find him. And, and just leave it at that. You don't got to do all that introducing him, showing him save Iris West and, and all that stuff that they're doing there. Not a fan of it. Uh, not a fan of a, that. Uh, there, there's a lot of enjoyable action in here. There's some great substance brought to these roles and depth. But there's still a lot of fall, uh, flaws, problems, faults. Some casting choices aren't particularly the best. Um, no emotional range was really given a showcase through Cyborg. He just comes off kind of miserable <laughs> and robotic. Uh, but as for the rest... Uh, pretty enjoyable. Uh, I'd say that it was pretty enjoyable. It's very lengthy, it's very long, but I'd give it a solid 8 out of 10. I would give it a solid 8 out of 10. So let me know your thoughts, your opinions. Uh, do you think that I'm rating it too high? Do you think I'm rating it too low? Do you think I'm criticizing too much? Do you think I need to go straight to hell and fuck myself? I, I, do you think... Yeah, these are these are fair criticisms. Uh, and... and 8 out of 10, because it's got great cinematography, it's got solid action, it's got a, a, a villain with purpose and substance to it, it's got a lot of characters with a lot of depth, everybody kind of feels like they have a real role on the team, a real point of being there, um, but some of the other characters, Lois, Martha Kent, uh, some of these other scenes uh, don't seem like they're absolutely necessary. Not all of them, and it, uh, it makes the film linger a little bit longer than it should. But let me know your thoughts and opinions. Fake good one here. Eventually, we will like, subscribe, share, comment. Stay awesome. Rock on.